I love patterns. And I love dancing. And I love movement. I think more with my body. I think more with my hands. Emotions that I kind of don't know how to control. Like when I get angry, when I get anxious, I feel like I've put into my pieces. I see the ability to conquer my frustration. With my art, I can actually overcome it and put it into a beautiful piece of work. My father's side of the family, they went up to Alaska during the gold rush. And we have a family gold mine up there that I've worked on every summer of my life until I was 18, 17. You know, and summer as a kid is kind of precious because you're like, school's finally out and you get to do what you want and hang out with your friends. But I would always leave and my friends would miss me, but they would write me letters. You know, none of this like instant messaging. And coming back to the city, there's the culture shock. That was, I remember also being very difficult to handle, feeling so kind of divided between the big city and the middle of nowhere. There's so many highs of feeling like connected and then the lows being like, wow, I'm so alone. Like reading back in my diary and writing journal entries that seem so heavy um, with loneliness. When I was 16, I got an older boyfriend. Yeah, I was sneaking out in the middle of the night, drinking, not crazy drug use, but a little bit of experimenting. So that would be in high school, and then I got pulled another direction. So I started using harder drugs. It made me feel not alone anymore. Of course, I didn't tell anyone. And, um, and I just, one day I was like, I'm losing it. And I, I was breaking. And so I just was like, I gotta change. I, I can do it, but I gotta change. And I started expressing the different things to my parents. They noticed something was up. But traditionally I would think, you know, say, oh, the darkest time was, oh, being in the depths of addiction. But the most darkest time I remember was um, getting clean and I thought I was gonna be messed up forever. I thought I was never gonna be the same. Um, and that was pretty bad. <laughs> but I um, knew it was part of the process. Knew it was part of what, was, what I was going through. And so I just had to make it through it. And I did. <laughs> A big part of my life and my inner transformation, right, is I practice Nichiren Buddhism and I chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Growing up as a Buddhist, I got to experience the wonderful community of the SGI. My Buddhist friend would come and visit me and we'd chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo together. And um, we didn't judge each other. We looked at things differently, right? But we still kept connecting. You know, we can still sit down and chant. and. That's an amazing feeling. What makes me chant the most is, well, my desire for my future, the future I want, <laughs> that seems so hard to get. Uh, so I chant, chant for my dreams. And all the things that come up to get in my way of that, I go and I chant. An octave is like a pattern, right? Moving up on the notes of the piano and almost about to connect to the next octave and you get the most like dissonance like it's really unpleasant and then it connects again and it all like shifts back into harmony but the harmony comes right after the greatest dissonance so um activating like it feels like a theme of my life which is this like oh everything's out of place everything's out of place and then oh wait every everything's in place you know like <laughs> So that's what activating is to me. My dreams, I feel like they're so big, is to live in a world where people don't feel so isolated and feel so alone like I did. Chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo makes me feel connected. So that's an inspiration for my art, is I want to make people feel like connected to life and become happy.